In a world full of turmoil, despair, and darkness, you need to carry the light. Season three of the Get Attitude podcast is where we will ignite your mind, your heart, and your attitude. And welcome to the Get Attitude podcast, the GAP. I am your host, Glenn Bill, international best-selling author of the book, The ABCs of Attitude, and America's number one attitude keynote speaker, we are so happy that you're joining us. Would you please, please remember, to, hey, if you got this, just share it. Just share this out to everybody you know so they can hit it because trust me, we have somebody in here today that is going to change your attitude, that is going to help you get from where you are to where you want to go and from who you are to who you want to become because why? She's lived a transformational life just like you. And the cool thing is she's not from America. She is from New Zealand, from the land down under, and... um we're going to introduce you to her. She's, I think, I call her a social media influencer. I'm sure she probably doesn't consider herself that. She considers herself, and she is, a nutrition, wellness, and mindset coach, as well as a fitness coach. So um, if you guys don't have the vitality, if you don't have the energy, and if you do have the extra 20 pounds, this podcast today may be... What is the best for you? Let's take a little listen to what her and her husband Mike do on her TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. Ready? Jason, roll it. Hey, babe. Tell us about your little friends that came and saw you in this paddock when we moved in the other day. <laughs> Where have they gone? I was so excited because the farmer brought the cows up. So then he put them in the pen. And then put the, them in the pen and then where did they go? The truck came and put them away. Up to where? <laughs> <laughs> no, I can eat them. <laughs> what are we eating? Cow. Where from, do you reckon? Not from the farm next not, door. Not your mates from out in the paddock outside? Like different cows. Let me introduce you to the one and only Joelle Leg from New Zealand. Joelle, welcome to the Get Attitude podcast. Thank you so much for having me. And it's poor cows, but they tasted delicious. Did they? <laughs> now, was it a cow that was directly next door to you or not? You don't know, do you? Well, I'm really hoping the turnaround wasn't... So, it was quite a quick turnaround from the cow leaving the paddock to being on my plate. So in my mind, I am telling myself it wasn't those beautiful little cows I was watching <laughs> frolicking the day before. <laughs> now, now, you may or may not know this, but how is the agriculture scene down in New, um, in New Zealand? You know, we're from the Midwest in Indiana. We got nothing but cows, and, man, we're making steaks and pork and all that. Do you guys have a pretty... A uh, big meat market down there in New Zealand. Is that what you guys eat? Yeah, yeah, it is. It's huge, but mainly dairy. For in New very. Zealand, the dairy farms are are very large. So, you know, very, it, we've got we've got a lot of choice here. Very <laughs> interesting. Now, um, if you guys want to follow Joelle, or if you want to start looking her up, it's just at Joelle Leg right on Facebook, TikTok, and Instagram. What you will, yeah, at <laughs> underscore Leg. Oh, there you go. Joel underscore leg. And what you will find when you, um, and this is how I got to like, like I, I saw this awesome, funny video. It was completely cute. And I sent it to my wife and she's like, Oh my God, this gal's freaking awesome. And you have like 60,000 people. Like you post a video and 60,000 people. And then you got a few that have gone like over a million. And so what, when people follow you, I'm sure they're like, Oh, that bitch. I want to be her. I want to have 60,000 followers. Can you just tell me, like, how did it start? What was it like? Was it strategic? Are you naturally viral? And then maybe what's the attitude lesson on putting yourself out there and, and creating what you've created? And I'd kind of also like to know, like, how long did it take from your first video to what you're doing now? Okay. I, lo I love these questions. Um. Do you know what it was it's really interesting because it all started with so i've always had my own coaching platform or, or accounts and my husband had his we own a, a boxing gym here in auckland as well and that's kind of what we were focusing on was you know mike was sharing his fitness things and i was sharing my nutrition and wellness and mindset and then during the the times where we all had to stay at home the last few years my husband started to film my reactions to the things he's done to me for the last 17 years so this is where it really started he he and he put one up 
and all of a sudden it got literally like a million views within a couple of days just him making fun of me and and it comes from a loving place every time yeah. how i react and it honestly just completely took off so then he was like well this is going well <laughs> and continued to do so so i think that's kind of where it, that's where it started and it really has just snowballed from there and for me it, what it's brought is this opportunity to share something I'm so passionate about and how everyone can just grab life and have fun with it. Like we do on the daily basis. So yeah, I, I hope I, that kind of, you know, yeah, well, no, 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 that's very fair. So uh, this really wasn't planned. It was just so natural, right? It was, it was, it was just organic and it was natural and it hit and it still hits. So uh, we encourage you, if you want to, if you, you know, look at, we're sharing the light, carry the light is the name of the uh, season in season three. I promise you, if you want some light in your life, follow them. Um, Boxing Alley Mike and Joel underscore leg and, and you will get that done. Let's talk about the uh, name at hand. I would love to know, uh, number one, what is your definition of attitude? Uh, how do you define attitude? And, and who was maybe your first attitude coach? When you, when you think about the attitude you have now, who was the one that really, you know, where'd you get that from? Okay. No, these, I love these questions. Um, for me, at, and attitude is something you can completely harness and shape yourself by living in the present moment. You can change, you can, you can transition your attitude to however you wish it to be. Mm -hmm. So there's the the opportunity to choose to feel and act and live and breathe and shape your life at any single moment. So my attitude, like my, the attitude for me has always come from an upbringing of believing in myself mm -hmm. from my beautiful parents who have honestly just given me every opportunity to to choose again, to be who I want to be, to flourish in life through just having a lot of fun and giving stuff a go, I think. So, and that's probably for me, the, the attitude of being able to just shoot again, you know, like life throws you down um, and you might not get the result you want. What can you take from that? How can you grow? How can you learn? Yes, you can be in that moment and, feel yuck and a bit shitty and gross and but the your attitude from that lesson then can propel you forward so yeah it's just it's a it's a way just to, your attitude is everything i think yes it is that's in my yeah. book awesome so so when you think about being uh well you you are actively helping and coaching others right what, what I want to know is, did you have to coach yourself? Were, were, was there a time in your life, whether it was five or 10 years ago, where you either looked in the mirror or looked inside yourself and said, I don't like who I am. Or I don't like how I look or whatever. Like, like what, what possessed you to become a life coach, nutrition coach, mindset coach? Where did that originate from? Yeah, no, I've had some huge like life experiences, which I've had to coach myself through. I think, um, I was at a point in a, I was in a completely different career where I was working extremely long hours, um, really struggling with how I saw myself and then re studied in nutrition and wellness. And, and that's what really changed my life. But I think the biggest change for me was I suffered with postnatal depression with my two children. Mm. And whilst I had a lot of support there, like I, I reached out to my husband, who was the close, you know, he's amazing, um, and a medical team and really worked through through that there. But then I had to draw on my own study and what I knew to really make choices every single day to get myself out of where I was. And mm. I remember at one point where... I was very low in life and thinking, oh my God, am I going to have to do this work like all the time? Is this how it's going to be? And 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 in, my, and in that moment, it was very overwhelming. And the thought of having to work at it every single day was just 
oh my goodness. But to work at your life every single day and to be where I am now, oh my goodness, like it's so worth it. And to keep like it, your potential to, to live and thrive is just huge. So I think going through that was pretty life-changing for me, I think. And, and so let's go back because, you know, this is real. Uh, 65% of our audience are women, um, mm-hmm. many of whom I'm sure have had children, many of whom, and I'm sure you know this because you were there, postpartum depression is real and mm-hmm. it's painful. And mm. um, I'd like you to talk to those people who maybe never got help. I mean, sometimes women just outweighed it or outlast it and they, they don't have the help. So mm. what, what would you say to those people uh, Maybe those new moms out there that are battling this, that have battled it, uh, what what were the two or three things that really you felt brought you out of it? Who did you study? What books did you read? Um, mm-hmm. What advice can you give those? And what advice can you give to husbands? Um, mm. You know, I know he he was big in, in your comeback. So for the guys that are listening out there, what can the husbands do? So I know that's like 10 questions, but I have a feeling no. you're smart enough to get there. All right, here we go. Okay. I think I think that my my first point to start with is to be gentle with yourself because as a new mom or even I mean moms can still be in a, a postpartum depression depression stage even when your children are older you know like if that's just how you've lived is just to to actually give yourself some grace and that in that what you do is incredible. And it, it's a huge life-changing thing becoming a mum, you know. Like, and to, you're not no, you're not going to have time to read read books because life is so busy. And or and and you know, like at, at that stage, especially that early stage. So it's one, be really gentle with yourself because what you're doing is the most important job in the world, and it's a huge job. Um, to speak up if you're not feeling yourself tell someone anyone and even if it is reach out to me send me a message because Uh it's even being able to direct you in a way of of you know where you can find the right help is amazing um and i think the 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 first step and for me talking to to my husband was he then was aware of how i was feeling he i mean obviously he could tell that things were were hard but he then knew that there needed to be like a bit of extra. He could then, he could speak up for me. Mm. So, you know, if I wasn't willing to go to my doctor, he would really encourage that in a really gentle way. It wasn't a matter of being like, you have to do this. It's that listening ear, that empathetic ear, understanding that maybe when someone is in a depressive state, they may be a little irrational with, how they're thinking or how they're feeling um and that's okay it was just a matter of him being able to um walk me through and he also reached out to my family for support because when you're supporting someone through a stage in life like that you need support too so for husbands Ah. (laughs) or partners you know they need to also ask for help Mm. from someone that they trust as well because it can be really hard supporting someone in that stage um so yeah and it, it, the, yeah my biggest advice to women is to be really gentle with yourself but please seek help and find the right people to be around you and and often it is as a mum telling another mum how you're feeling because mm-hmm. they they get it like even if you're not in a I feel like if, if you're not suffering from depression, being a mom and being honest about motherhood what? is just incredible because you'll find others are like, oh my gosh, I, w- I, w- me. I want to smack my kids too. <laughs> yeah, they drive me crazy. Right. Oh, my children won't put their shoes on either. I tell them 50 times. You know what I mean? Like it's that familiar, you know? Sure. And, and I even find that now. Like if I, I'm at rugby practice with the boys and I'll – mention something about you know saying the same thing 50 times right <laughs> be, yeah glad like i'm not the only one well, yeah yeah that's why they call husbands your next child because you have to do that with us too sometimes oh. 
Now, now you me- you mentioned your mother and father as your attitude coaches and that they always encouraged you. One thing we always liked, and, and I think, you know, if there's a special story about your mom or dad and what they did to really push you forward to helping people change their lives, love to hear that. But we always believe, and, and some people are lucky enough to have grandparents, but we always believe that the true attitude stories in, in our guest oftentimes lie in the stories of their grandparents parents. Did you have a grandmother or father that you were close to that made a difference in your attitude? And what did they do? And what was that all about? Oh, this is really special. Um, It's not um, so much like a huge story, but I I have one grandmother who is still alive. Uh And um, I've been asked the question before, like, who is my absolute inspirational role model in my life? And it would be my nana. Uh She's 96. She raised seven children and she was a teacher herself and she just lives with the kindest heart. So I come from a very large Catholic family and they, we have, um, she has 21 grandchildren and 13 great grandchildren. She's 96. She remembers every single one of their birthdays. They get a birthday card. Um, She's just incredible. And, And just that her beautiful, kind heart, I think, and the way she views people and the connection that you can have is just really, really beautiful. So, and that that's my mum's, my mum's mum. And I think from her, that's where my mum's positive attitude. Mum has always been, you know, you, um, I remember as a child coming home from school and someone being mean to me. And that was the old saying that sticks and stones will break my bones, but names will never hurt me. Mm. And, Actually, names do really hurt you. I mean, like, it's not nice when someone's not nice to you. But then learning to come to that kind of situation with a real empathetic view. So yeah. it wasn't, it was more being like, okay, that was really unkind of them to do so. But understanding that that person might be dealing with something in their life. And yes, I can stand up for myself, but also having a little empathy towards them as well. I think that kind of really helped. So, and also with mum and dad, so jumping back to, they were always told me I could be whatever I wanted to be. I could achieve whatever I wanted to achieve. And um, having that support and belief system behind me is, is pretty amazing. And I try to instill the same on my boys um, that they can do and be whatever they want to. You've just got to, you could have a crack. Like, mm-hmm. And that was also, I think, like, you know, have it, I like that saying, have a crack at life, you know, if there's, if there's something and you're scared of it, and, and this has also, also not always been, I've always wanted to have a go at some things, but then let that fear of what people might think, or that, that was a big thing for me, actually, the judgment of others, as a, especially as a teenage girl yeah. and in my 20s, you know, mm-hmm. I probably wouldn't have had a go as much. Um and possibly it's with age as well, um, that willingness to just feel the fear and do it anyway um, has kind of helped me just get on. And and then knowing that my parents had always said or instilled that value in me, but the fear of that teenage years, I think, kind of held me back a little bit. Yeah, but, yeah, now being able to just, oh, like, Social media has probably helped. Sorry, I'm jumping in circles here, but that the the um putting myself out there and that because that is that's quite a thing and sharing your life with people, other people, all online, you know, like and and you do get there is judgment there, but going okay, well the world sees it, and so why not just get on with it and have a go anyway? Interesting. That, yeah, yeah no. sorry, I went right. I well, like to as, talk to as a um, fellow Catholic from a huge Catholic family who's ADD, you're totally fine. I've followed everything. How many? How, how many siblings do you have? Well, no, I, my family. I only have two brothers. Oh, okay. um, but it's my mom and my dad. So the mom has seven, and my dad has six. Yeah, yeah. So. I know how it is. They are. That's good. So um, mm. let's just talk about that. Um, social media fear, right? Or, or yeah. fear in general. Um, 
So 72,000 people see you do stuff. They see you smile and laugh with a, you know, it, it's kind of crazy. Mm. Did that freak you out? And do people say hateful things in the comments? Are they like, you're an idiot or, you know, like, is it weird for you? Are your kids aware of how many people are following you and your husband? And, and like, so like, what's that dynamic? Or do you just not give a shit? And you're like, we're just going to go do what we're doing. <laughs> I wish I, I'm not quite, a, I'm not a don't give a shit person, but um, no, it, 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 it's blowing my mind, but it's, 99% of the feedback we get and the comments are positive. There is always that 1%. And what's really interesting, I, and I think it's a, like a natural thing we do as humans, is you see that one comment and there's all the rest of them are super positive. And you read that one and I read it out and it sticks there and it's like, oh my goodness. Something I've done now is though I read it so like often enough, like I'll read it and read it and read it. And then so it doesn't to the point where it doesn't actually bother me so much. Obviously it can depend on your mood. Like if I'm coming in two days pre-menstrual and I read a, read a comment and I'm just like, really? But I think my um, personality and that I am, very empathetic I read I uh, will these nasty things are obviously coming from a place of of their discomfort or someone's you know unhappiness and I always will respond with loving kindness and empathy towards them and and I think that's a big part of life and our attitude if I if you can have empathy for other people and where they're at it can really it supports you and your emotional state and your mental well-being um from there but um, as far as the social media side of things, yeah, and that that taking off has just blown my mind. And 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 New Zealand's a small place. There's only five million people that live here, so I get recognised often. And people will come up to me in the supermarket. I've had people call their wives when they've met me and had some photos. And it, and I really genuinely just believe I'm a, just a Kiwi girl yeah. sharing the normal ins and outs of of life. Um. And our boys, they're five and seven, Rocco and Brax, they are aware. Um, and if anything, if we ever feature them, we do ask if it's okay. Obviously, they're really little, so they can't quite understand the impact that the internet has. But mm -hmm. they're, they're learning. And some of their friends have obviously, their parents might have said, oh, I saw Rocco doing something today. <laughs> and then their friend of, friends have said to them. And, yeah. and, and Daddy always has his camera to film a joke um, only when it's appropriate <laughs> yeah. they're around yeah. some of them are not for children's ears but yeah it, it's for me it's it's a yeah not a natural thing but it's what, know, I'm just what rolling. you know i i it, it just to me so you know it was weird i i saw it and it made me feel good and it made me laugh and i instantly shared it with my wife because i wanted her to be so you know, I'm like, it, there's a secret sauce there. I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's the humor, if it's just something as powerful as a smile, um, if it's just being authentic. Do you think, do you, have you studied or have you thought about why do so many people freaking love what we do? Um, I have, and generally it's, it's more the, I think it's just from the feedback is it's what I think it works is me being authentically reacting like mm -hmm. nothing is fake I, for, for me i can't stand fake like if you, just be yourself and be who you are and people you'll connect with a connection is big for us so connection you yeah. know people will come to you so i think what works is just that it's a very genuine re reaction or connection, but also it's very relatable. And the the marriage humor is great. It's just yeah. a light on what goes on behind closed doors that people might think, oh, it's only me. And and also being able to laugh, like I can laugh at myself. So I think that's why if, if my husband's playing a joke, I'm like, oh yeah, like, yeah, I know. I, I do nag, but also you can make a shit everywhere. So. <laughs> Well, we'll think, laugh about it, but pick it up. Yeah, I think uh, I think it's a like it's a great pattern interrupt. Um, so I think it's like it's, it's an emotional state change for people that are scrolling. 
But then I always think, I'm like, well, you know, the formula is not that hard. And why is it that you're either the only one doing it or maybe you're just the only ones that are doing it right? And uh, I just think it's so cool. I I want to now, um, so uh, you can take your social media star hat off. I do want to just get into your your coaching a little bit. And if you could maybe just give me, uh, we're, we're going to go through each uh, nutrition, uh, wellness, mindset, um, and, and fitness, those four, uh, what, what I want to do is just kind of bullet point it, right. For our gappers at home, right. Cause I know you got great stuff to share. I know you got great stuff to tell. I know that you have great stuff to relate to the people that are like, come on, Glenn, get to the mindset stuff. So let's start there. Give me the two or three most important things, uh, or two or three most important exercises or solutions that our gappers, that's what we call our listeners, can take right now to improve their mindset? Like what are two or three things they can do right now to improve their mindset or what should they know about their mindset first? Okay. I think one, the most important thing is you always have a choice. Like every opportunity, every moment, you have an opportunity to choose how you want to view a situation, how you want to feel, how you want to react. It's your choice. So no matter what you're confronted with, if it's a negative situation, you can choose to go this way or that way. Um, And that's something for me, and I've been in a place where I felt like I I did, I I couldn't choose or you were stuck, you know, and if you are stuck, it's okay, I'm going to choose and then take action because I think the biggest thing when we're in a, in a position where we're really struggling is it's being able to go, okay, I'm, I'm here and I'm stuck and I, and I know I have a choice and I want, I want to be healthier or I want to be happier or I, okay, what action am I going to take to get me there? And it can be something so small. So, you know, like, I want to feel happier. It's not just a matter of being like, okay, I'm going to feel happy. It's what brings me joy. I, you know, how am I going to make myself feel happy and, and taking action in that. So I like pick up the phone and call someone that makes you feel happy. That That's take, that, like that's a really small action, but mm-hmm. that can help up here and can snowball from, from there. And, and, um, and we don't have enough time for this, but yeah, like doing a line or smoking a joint, probably not the right decision to make you happy. <laughs> probably not i know that's what um, half of our listeners think well hey i'll be happy i'll go have a drink are you kidding me <laughs> so so i love that's it. probably not good for your overall health in the long term if that's going to be what you're going to do every time that get, yeah that gets into our next one nutrition so mindset uh gappers look at uh, we always say this all the time right the definition of attitude is being dedicated to the way that you think and attitude is always a choice, positive or negative. And when it comes to mindset, which I thought was so powerful about your answer, is sometimes we do get stuck and we only focus on one one choice when there's always two choices, positive or negative. And then the second thing is do something and don't be stuck, no matter how, how bad it is. And that could be as simple as walking around the block. So let's talk about this um, thing called nutrition. Give us your two or three best... Um, at uh, pieces of advice on nutrition. Simplify. Honestly, I think when we think about nutrition, we think about restriction and, oh, I'm going to have to be on a diet and I'm going to have to eat salad. Like it's, like, no, you don't. <laughs> um, Just simplify it. Water. Like if you have a glass of water before every meal or eight times a day, like anytime, if you go to go to the fridge, you know, have a glass of water on the way because half the time you're actually just dehydrated. Mm. Um, Good. Great. That's great. Honestly, just simplify it. And, and, and you can still eat well, but enjoy, you know, your, your foods that are less than healthy, you know, like it's just, it's just really simplifying things. Um, Add more vegetables to your plate. If you're having a meal that um, I'm trying to, if you've got like deep fried, food it's add a lot of veggies on the side you know if you're wanting to improve your nutrition just add more of the good stuff without feeling like you're having to take everything else away that would be my starting point actually for a lot of 
a lot of clients I work with is rather than restrict and take away, add more goodness in. This is actually my philosophy for life as well. Add more of the goodness in Love it. because it crowds out the less than ideal things. And as far as nutrition goes, add more goodness in. So, and I think most of us are aware the goodness is, you know, fresh whole foods, vegetables, um, you know, meat and seafood. And um, for women, don't just carbohydrates. They're not that. They're not as scary as the the media world or the fitness or the social media has made them seem. You need carbohydrates if you're feeling restricted and low on energy mm-hmm. um you need in life and good fats like olive oil and avocado and things like that sorry now i'm getting too technical but you know no, it's good. you need add more good stuff in to crowd the less than ideal foods out I got- so my two tips water <laughs> add more water and add more add more goodness yeah so you know when i think about i love mashed potatoes and gravy so instead of a half a plate of mashed potatoes and gravy guys just do a quarter plate of mashed potatoes and gravy and then add that next quarter full of veggies and and i actually do that so both of those i do i'm going to check the box on that let's get to this thing called wellness like what does wellness mean and what are your best tips um to help people with their wellness Okay. So for me, wellness is like our overall well-being and that that kind of I think wellness actually encompasses all of the 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 mind, the body, your soul, your um I think f- movement, it's a it's a real whole package. But for me, wellness is being able to nurture our whole nervous system and become grounded and well in a sense of our overall health so for for me like a lot of my tools that I use personally is it's small things like um supporting myself by getting out in nature and getting outside in New Zealand it's interesting Uh, one of the things that I get a lot of um feedback about is that I'm always barefoot in New Zealand that's really normal like we walk around I mean we we wear shoes to to work into the meetings and things but if I'm outside you're, you're barefoot in New Zealand so and this is quite a holistic approach but being barefoot on the earth feeling the soil mm. is very ground really brings you back down so this is it's something that i work with some of my clients to to do it more often but as kiwis it's very very normal here um using tools like journaling and right and getting out of here because we can be so overwhelmed with especially as women everything that's going on in our lives and um our brains can be so busy so i use for me i use a journal to to brain dump and just get everything out of here onto that piece of paper and half the time I look at that piece of paper and and Mike that's probably why our marriage works so well because I can laugh at myself but he will be like like to be in my brain he's like oh my god your poor head like if I write it down and I read it I can then see like oh my god like half that shit up there is just crap like not crazy but you know it's not even needing to be there you know and and so that's a tool that I use to then get out of my head and move on and be able to be active and be busy and, and continue with That's my great. daily life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Breath work is another thing. Breathing. We forget. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Like, Oh, just see. And, and me talking a lot now, it's just going, okay, hang on. <sighs> Whoa. Like that just brought my energy a little bit more back down, you know? It's so it's, true. It's, like, it's so true. Yeah. 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 I love so, I love those tips. That's good. Anything else you want to add? No, uh, and and then the extension of breath work is is meditation. So There you go. And but breath is a form of meditation. Mm-hmm. And I think the word meditation can be really woo-woo or you know a bit oh, like oh, they meditate. Just that like that simple breath exercise. I just one deep breath in. You know, if you did that several times that that can be your form of meditation. It's incredible for just yeah. If you can support your nervous system to come back to the here and now, 
yes. by breathing, it's a huge tool to, to, to use to reset and get out of that or whatever it is that your state you're in. Um, it's powerful, really powerful. That's good. I love it. I love it. All great advice from Joelle Leg. Joelle, now just real quick, are you like a like who are you a fan of when it comes to like like do you have a mentor? Are there is there, you know, is it a Tony Robbins type of guy or is it Taylor Swift or like who like inspires you that's out there that you love to follow? Um Gabby Bernstein? Okay. She's, yeah. I she her life experience or her story she shared from she was uh an addict a drug addict and then also she's also suffered with postnatal uh depression as well Mm. um and how she's changed her life is incredible and how she coaches she's very from a very spiritual comes from a very spiritual place and i just find her story and what she shares is amazing um I'm very sporty. So in New Zealand, it's a lot of uh, New Zealand sports women that I find incredible. Um, and and also, though, for me, it's the mums that are, have shown me that you can be a mum and still live your life and achieve your goals and dreams. And I think also my mum instilled that in me. My mum's an early childhood teacher. And so she raised my, myself and my brothers, but yet went on to – Support. She's incredibly well known in our local community because she's just so wonderful with children, and to show me that she can do that and still have three beautiful children. Yeah. Um. Yeah, that's pretty inspiring. I love it. So we're gonna try to do this quickly because our time's about to expire. But uh, I do this thing called knowledge through the decades, where we just kind of walk through your life and ask you to give us an attitude lesson. Um at certain stages of your life. And so we always like to start and and people always go, what do you mean? I don't remember being born, but what do you think the attitude lesson is of birth? Oh, Oh, um, or if you think, or if you think about giving birth to your kids, what was the attitude lesson? Like put yourself on the table. You just gave birth. Like what was the attitude lesson that you're like, Oh boy. (laughs) Like, I like it's the power like the power you you have as a human is incredible like wow like I think that's just as simple as that like for me giving but I mean and it would be as giving birth like or as a baby like you're it's a new life like you've got opportunity awaits you you know yeah like it's just yeah, life yeah. is there. The uh, and I, you know, I've I've had women say I've done nothing more powerful than actually birth a child. <laughs> when you think of that, I mean, whether it, you can yeah. run a marathon or you can birth a child, I'm still saying birthing a child's kind of more impressive than running a marathon because guys can run yeah. marathons; so they can't birth a child, you know. So I just love, hmm. you know, the awesome powerfulness, right, of of that. I I love that answer. That's raw and real. Now I want you to um, go to. I think you'd be in third or fourth grade in the as a Kiwi when you were 10 years old. What I want to know is, uh, do you remember being 10? Was there something that happened to you? Did you get in trouble? Were you bullied? Were you a bully? Like, what was the attitude lesson that you can remember from being, you know, fourth or fifth grade when you were 10 years old? Mm-hmm. I think um, I wasn't bullied, but there was, I remember being in this, we, we had this group of girls where we just idolized this one girl and we'd always do what kind of suited her. And I think my lesson from that is like, you can still be kind and give to, to others, but the attitude of being like, actually you are your own person and doing what serves you best. Well, if I could see that little 10 year old girl now, just break away. Like, you know, you don't, it was kind of fit in and, 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 you don't need to fit in because you will still be so well loved and accepted by other people. So I think not having to, yeah, pander to somebody else all the time. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. I, I, um, uh, and, and all you got to do is walk through a grade school and look Mm. at the second, third and fourth graders. And, and that dynamic has not died. 
And I think, yeah. and, and I don't know that it ever will die. And no matter how much people try to do it, there's always seems to be a, a ringleader. And so I'm sure mm-hmm. that just hit home with a lot of different people. There's, there's no question. Well, whoever can figure that out, that's probably something that should be studied more. Let's go to when you were 20. Now, did, did you go to college? Were you a college grad or what were you doing at 20? And what was the attitude lesson? Tell us about that. <laughs> I laugh because I, at, um, I did like a gap year. So we, we call it high school in New Zealand. Yes. So that's, yeah. And then we went, I did a gap year and then I went to university. Mm-hmm. So when I was 20, I was just coming back to New Zealand after living in the UK and partying so hard. <laughs> <laughs> and then I had to come back and uh, study. I went to, it wasn't my nutrition and one, I actually studied broadcasting at that point. And, um, I think my biggest lesson there was, um, or biggest attitude lesson was just to understand that where I'm at and what I'm going through at that, because it's huge life change really there. And it was that freedom of being able to do what my mom and dad didn't know what I was doing anymore. I can do whatever I wanted, but also that's a lot of responsibility, you know, like, again it comes back to those choices and the choices you make can right. really influence where you're at and what you're doing so um thank god they didn't have yeah. social media when you were 20 running around the uk oh, oh my god i know <laughs> there are some stories but we don't have time okay. um <laughs> so so the the attitude lesson was uh life life is real right? Life is real. And, uh, I better buckle down and get ready. Here here comes university. Right. And yeah, the attitude is it's, it's what I do that will get me to where I want to be. So yeah, it's, it's again, like, I think it's the choices thing, you know, it's that attitude of going, you can, you're, you have such an influence on your life. You're the, you're the driver here, you know, like, Love love it. Tell me about with it. tell me about turning thirty. I'm guessing you're thirty, right? Yeah, I'm thirty eight. I'm, right. I'm nearly forty. Well, that's all right. Well, we can't do forty unless you come on in three years. So tell me, do you remember turning thirty, and what was that like? And what was the attitude lesson of thirty? Thirty was thirty was pretty cool. I got I was I became pregnant like a month after I turned thirty. Nice. So it was a pretty like life changing time for me. Mm-hmm. Um. Uh, my attitude of, of life at 30 is very similar to now. It was like, it was like, enjoy it, like soak it up. Like life right. is happening now. Like mm. be in the moment and just embrace where you're at. I think at 30. I love it. I, I love also it. felt really old at 30. <laughs> <laughs> Wait till you're 55, honey. <laughs> 55 years young. See, 50. I very much embrace like, yeah. Yeah, we got like yeah, when, is, when you're yeah. 55, you're like, oh God, I wish I was 30 again. You know, that's yeah, that's exactly. what you'll always say. <laughs> so, uh, Joel Leg, you've been so sweet and adorable and full of great, great nuggets for our people, and you you carry the light, and that's why I put you on this podcast because um, I want people to follow you. I want them to feel the way that I feel when I when I see you and Mike do what you do because I know they'll feel better. And the gift of making people feel better and to carry the light is truly original. Most, uh, most, if not all of your videos, you don't get to say anything. So what I just want to do is, um, you know, if you could, uh, talk, talk to the person that's in the car, that's crying, that's on the beach, that's hopeless and just give them, you know, a, a, a message of hope coming from, from the heart of the girl that hopefully they'll start looking at and, and being encouraged by, and we'll close the show with that. So, Joel, if you could give us a message of hope for our gappers, we'd really love to hear it. Mm, thank you. Um, I think, firstly, I would extend love and grace to give yourself some grace, give yourself some love by coming back to who you are because your you matter your life matters what you feel matters and if you can be where you are right now take a breath give it's even that like hugging yourself and giving yourself the love that you so deserve to then go forth and be with who you want to be and change your life and however you wish to it's it's that 
I always come from that place of being gentle because I think I have been so hard on myself very, through various times in my life. But mm. if I come back to being living a loving kindness, it, it's just incredible. And that one thing I actually haven't um, mentioned is that having an attitude of gratitude. So where you are right now, find one thing that you can be grateful for. It could be the fact that you've got shoes on your feet. It could be the fact that the sun is shining and you can feel the warmth of the sun on your skin. Like, just be where you are right now and give yourself every little bit of love and gratitude that you can. I love it. I hope I love that it. helps. Well, it did. And Joelle, I'm grat- I am grateful for uh, to, to have you on our podcast. I'm grateful that you shared a good 40 minutes with us. Uh, you are a fantastic guest. I'm going to keep watching you. And if I get down to New Zealand, I'll uh, look you up. Sound good? Oh, my gosh. Please do. That would be awesome. We'd love that. No, thank you. Uh, thank you for having me. Yeah, really my, love the opportunity. My pleasure. Uh, Gappers, that was Joelle Leg. Give her a shout at, at Joelle underscore Leg or at Boxing Alley Mike. And uh, you will not regret it. If you need a pickup, if you need somebody to put some light in your life, those two will do it. Joelle, thanks so much. And we will see you guys on the next Get Attitude podcast.